Billingham, a name, if you've heard it before, that's synonymous with very traditional, very British camera bags. Is Billingham the best bag you can get? Maybe. They're essentially made by hand of top grade materials, just like they've always been. And they're weather resistant right out of the box, no cover required. This is a Billingham F-Stop, the F1.4 model. Is it the best bag for a larger mirrorless kit or a smaller DSLR kit? Again, maybe. It might well be for me anyway. Hey YouTubers, I'm here with a bag review. It's been a while since I've done one and what I'm going to talk about today is a new Billingham bag that I got. Well, it's new to me. I got it off of eBay. This is a Billingham bag line that's not talked about all that much as far as I can tell. People tend to talk about the Hadley Pros a lot, the Hadley line in general. This is from their F-Stop line and this is an F1.4. Uh, they've got this cute naming convention where the uh, F-Stop determines the size of the bag. So the widest aperture, or, or commonly the widest aperture you'll find is an F1.4. So this is the widest, biggest bag in the F-Stop line. Uh, they make an, a 2.8, and they may make another one, I can't remember right now, off the top of my head. But this is the biggest bag in that line. So uh, the reason I got it is I had picked up off of some forums that the F-Stop is a little squarer than the Hadley line and uh, might fit equipment a little bit better. The, the Hadley has a, a sleeker design, you could argue, uh, but that does have a trade-off where, given the, depending on the type of equipment you have in the bag, uh, it can kind of be hard to get the equipment in and out. I've actually found that to be the case. This bag, I believe, depending on your needs, could replace quite nicely the Hadley Pro. And I'm just going to pull the Hadley Pro up here just for a moment. Hadley Pro is a little bit bigger, a little wider maybe. Just, it's hard for you to see on camera, but it's it's just a little tiny bit wider. Uh, I'm going to get into this with an overhead view eventually. Um, but it's, it's narrower or shallower uh, in this dimension than the F-stop. The F-stop's a, a little bit thicker. So I'll get into the trade-offs between the Hadley Pro and uh, this particular F-stop model. Um, but right now I'm just going to dump out the contents of this bag and let you see what I have in there. So this bag, one thing about it is it doesn't have replaceable straps, or at least you'd have to send it back to um, Billingham to have new straps sewn in, whereas the Hadley you can replace those straps easily. Um, kind of a nice flap here. I like this flap a little bit better than the Hadley's. It's a little floppier and um, it, it doesn't seem to get in the way as much. So uh, inside, I've got my A7 II, all dolled up as usual with an L-plate and, and grip. Um, I've got 90 millimeter Summicron. I've got all R lenses in here right now, Leica R lenses. Uh, and I've got a uh, 24 millimeter with the uh, lens hood and a patented separator and uh, a new addition to the lineup, a 180 millimeter f4 Leica R lens. That's it for the contents of the bag. In the front pocket, I don't have a lot right now, but I've got the little Sony flash, the little flat one. This pack's just about anywhere, so that's kind of nice. It's not super powerful, but you know, it's a trade-off. Uh, lens caps and the front and rear and an extra battery. It would hold more. Uh, again, I'll get into this more later. What the F1.4 gives away uh, between it and the uh, Hadley Pro is the front pocket is not really the most generous. Hey, I've got a Allen wrench in here too. Um, it's just not the most generous pocket. I wish they'd give it a little more space. Uh, on the back, it's got a zip pocket here. And I haven't tried it, but I'm, I'm sure an iPad would fit into here, no problem. Uh, when I get into the overhead view, you'll see this better, but going back to the inside, there's uh, a sleeve or space in here where you can put an iPad or a small notebook computer. So what I'm going to do now is just move into the overhead view and show you different ways to pack up this bag and also demonstrate why I think it, at least for me, is a better solution for most of the gear that I carry 
uh, compared to the Hadley Pro. So what we're looking at here is the bag from the photographer's point of view. This is the back of the bag here. I'm going to just flip the um, top cover open. Now notice how pliable this fabric is. This is one thing I really, really love about Billingham material. It is very luxurious feeling. It's pliable, but not cheap feeling in the least. I just love um, how, how this fabric handles. And it'll just flop right down behind the bag. And then this is the top cover that kind of hides your gear, I guess. Maybe keeps a little moisture or dust from getting in. Mostly it kind of gets in the way when you're shooting. So what I do if I'm shooting actively is I can tuck it down inside of here. At least if you don't have a laptop, that'll work. So now that's tucked in and you can get to your gear more easily. Uh, this is the kit that I just pulled out of the bag. So this is the... Uh, Sony A7 with an arm out adapter and a 50 millimeter Summicron and I just want to demonstrate that that drops in there pretty easily. It is pushing the bag out just a little bit but it's not a stretch at all. It just goes in easily. There's not a lot of extra stuff going on in here. It's one thing I like about these bags. Uh, it's, it's just minimalist on the inside but it's got enough padding for me. So let's get the camera out of the way. Now, I'm going to point out the lens dividers before I pull out the lenses. The lens dividers are slim, but I like that. Uh, uh, having come from sort of a Domkey fan background, I like thin dividers. There's enough padding here to protect your gear, not so much that it takes up room that you might like to use for something else. So I consider that a good thing, and, and you can see there's a lot of Velcro in here. You can move these around a lot. So I'll go ahead and pull the 180 out. I had that on one side, the 90. And the 24. You can see those all fit in there really easily. One detail I want to point out is one of the dividers actually has a little flappy deal on it. I found this to not be of much use to me, so I ended up putting it down in the bag, and as you saw, and so it's fine, it's not in the way. Uh, I guess the idea is you could have a flap and kind of have a lens underneath and something else on top. Uh, I found that didn't really work out that well for me, but it's not a problem. The divider works just fine as is. Uh, another divider here, that's all the dividers the bag comes with as far as I know. I got this used off of eBay, so uh, I believe I got the full setup though. And then here's the pocket. As I said, a little narrow. Um, you could stuff it, but it's kind of hard to see what's in there. It'd be nice if you could open it up a little more. Um, it also might be nice if it had two pockets like the Hadley Pro, but you, know, you may argue, okay, well then you'd have a Hadley Pro in your hands. That's probably true. Anyway, I only wish it had maybe a half an inch to an inch more room in there. Um, as with all Billinghams, as far as I know, there's no extra pockets inside, no zippered compartments. You know, no CF card holders, no filter holders, none of that stuff. It's very minimalist, and I actually, honestly, appreciate that in these bags. There's nothing to catch a lens as you pull it out of here. Um, if, I, if Compare that to another bag that I have, and I've done a review on it, and I love the bag, the Retrospective 7. This bag has no doodads in it. So things come in and out very, very easily. I really appreciate that. You may not. Uh, if you go back and look at my review on the uh, Retrospective 5, I actually complained about the doodads because the bag was so small the doodads got in the way. The Retro 7 is sized just right for that kind of doodad, but they still kind of get in the way. And I'm sorry I keep saying doodad and waving my hands. Uh, maybe I'll get the uh, Retro uh, 7 in here and show you what I'm talking about, uh, how it kind of gets in the way of getting a camera in and out. So if you want more pocket room, you can attach the, uh, I think they're called Avia, A-V-E-A, or Delta, uh, one of the two. You can attach those here and get some sort of side pockets. So I'm thinking, for my purposes anyway, this bag is tremendous. And if you're interested in how the bag is sized uh, and how it fits and hangs, that's it. It's a fairly compact bag.
Uh, and as I said, it's it's easy to work out of. Just pull it open, fold this behind, and uh, I shoved that camera in and, and didn't reorganize the pockets. But uh, you know, it's really easy to work out of, and it doesn't flatten too much. So it's as I was saying, easy to get lenses in and out of. So uh, that's uh, that's how it fits and looks. Okay, now I've got a full-size, full-frame DSLR in here. This is my Sony A900. It's a monster compared to the A7 Mark II. Still fits in here very nicely. Uh, it's a little tighter because the lenses are a little bigger. and We'll get into the lenses here in a second. But uh, this behemoth with a grip, it's going to be about the same size as any pro DSLR you might want to carry. And obviously, if you didn't have the, uh, the grip on, Things would fit a lot more nicely and you could get more stuff in. Front pocket still has tons of room, even with that big camera in there. That's a 50 millimeter lens on the front of the camera. The lenses I have in here, uh, this is the famous Minolta 70 to 210 beer can. That fits in nicely. And then over here I have a uh, Sigma 28 millimeter f1.8. This is a decent size lens. Um, I kind of had to put the lens in first and then put the uh, A900 in after because it wouldn't slide in so nicely when the A900 was in. So we're at the edge of sort of uh, usability with a big full-size full-frame camera with a grip and two decent sized lenses. So uh, that's it for a full-frame digital camera. The bag will obviously also work really well for film gear. Uh, this is kind of a silly example. Um, this is my R8 with, again, a battery grip on it. It's a little smaller than the A900, um, but uh, I actually have room to spare with that. I didn't move the divider around, so I could possibly make a little room for something. I'm not sure what, but anyway, it fits in really easily. It's got a 28 millimeter on the front and then Lenses are similar to what I had with the a7. I've got a the 180 a 24 the 90s underneath so this camera again if I took the grip off it would fit in there really easily and I might be able to make room for something else About medium format gear all right, I've got a Hasselblad f201 here with a 60 millimeter uh, CF lens attached to it and over here, I've got 110 millimeter f2 and over here, a 50 millimeter f2.8. This is a big lens. It's very heavy and fat and so forth. Um, I like to show these lenses off with the uh, the caps off because the glass is so impressive, especially on that guy. Anyway, uh, this fits. Obviously, the uh, the camera sticks up a bit out of the bag. Not anything to worry about. You can uh, with a cap on anyway. Once you close the bag. There's, there's enough room in the top that uh, you could close this up, no problem. I think this is actually a pretty good way to go. I mean, you can reach right in and grab these lenses. There's nothing getting in the way of doing that. And the hoods, I've got uh, both the hood for this and the hood for this guy. You can throw them in this side and uh, throw a bunch of film in the front. It'll barely fit <laughs> because of the lack of depth. Anyway. Uh, a Hasselblad kit would work very well in here, and most Hasselblad gear is a little smaller than what I put in here, so uh, even better. Okay, here we have the Hadley Pro. Like I said, I'm going to uh, do a comparison a little bit. The Hadley Pro, and I don't know if you can tell by looking at the prior video, is a little, a little more shallow, I guess, than uh, the F1.4. So I'm going to open it up. Again, nice material. Um, this flap, for, you can tell already this flap's a lot narrower than the one that was on the F1.4, so that kind of indicates how deep the inside of the Hadley Pro is. Let me get these things out of the way. Obviously it didn't prep very well. So here's the inside, and you can see how it has this sort of arch shape in here, so the, the sides are smaller than the center. And I go into this in a lot of detail in my Hadley Pro review. Let me grab my Sony A7 and throw it in here. Okay, that fits, but can you see how it's really, it's really stretching that guy out? And if I were to try to put a divider over here 
it's just not going to work very well. It's crowded. Uh, lenses will fit in here just fine. I could reorganize a bit, but really the Hadley Pro is not meant for something of this depth. The f1.4 is just deeper, and that's a trade-off. The Hadley Pro is really great for rangefinder size gear. Um, obviously, if you're not adapting old-school lenses to a mirrorless camera like this, where the lens gets deeper because you've got this adapter, you know, there's a lot of reasons why you might like the Hadley Pro. The Hadley Pro has, uh, you know, these pockets on the front are infinitely... <laughs> are infinitely more useful than the one on the F1.4. However, for my purposes, and perhaps yours, maybe you ought to think about it, uh, the F1.4 is a better bag for my purposes. Okay, one more comparison, and if you notice a video quality difference, that's because I had to switch over to the A7 to shoot the rest of this video. I had been using my uh, RX100 Mark III before, and it exhausted its battery. Sony batteries do not last for crap. Anyway, so I'm shooting this on the A7 II, and this is the uh, Think Tank Retro 7, Retrospective 7. And this is a bag I like a lot. Um, it's more feature-laden than the Domkeys. I mean, it's got, you know, it's got a little pocket here. It's got an inner pocket here. I, I have a full review on this. I'm not going to go through it all. This pocket bellows out. It's it's plenty roomy. It can be tacked down with Velcro. Um, so it's got a lot of nice features. It's got, you know, a, a sort of a filing system in here. Um, one thing that does get on my nerves is these deals. They're, I guess, to keep the dust and, uh, and rain out and that sort of thing. But that's where you, well, at least where it's what, where I put my lenses. So I'm constantly having to fight to get lenses in and out of there. And then inside, we have more pockets, and it's really, in the Retro 7, it's okay. The bag's big enough, you can kind of live with that stuff. Let me grab a lens. So this is a 90R uh, lens. You know, it, it comes out, but you have to get it past these things, and sometimes that's a pain. Um, in the Retro 7, that's fine. The Retro 5 has these very same features, and, and they get more in the way because there's just not as much room. But uh, this is a great bag. I just kind of wanted to contrast this with uh, the, the Billingham bags and just how many features this bag has and how few the Billinghams have. I actually kind of prefer the Billingham approach, even though I really like this bag a lot.